Well, the, uh, the ecumenical scene in the United States uh, is, is somewhat strong. Uh, now we have a hundred more than a hundred years of history uh, of the of the scene. I really think of the ecumenical movement as being birthed by young people through the YMCA, the YWCA, the World Student Christian Movement. And I repeatedly tell people these stories to remind them that this was young people coming together to say, we're really not interested in the conflicts between the denominations. Uh, we are all one in Christ. And I feel like over the years, the ecumenical movement has said, it doesn't matter what denomination you're in. What matters is that you are a follower of Christ. And that's really lived out through institutions that are such as the National Council of Churches. And when I say institutions, I mean the, um, the existing framework for this movement because it is an ecumenical movement. And being here in, uh, in Bosse and here at the Ecumenical Center these last few days with colleagues from around the world, I'm reminded we are part of a movement for unity in Christ. And uh, the same struggles that my f sisters and brothers in Africa, Latin America, Asia, the Middle East, and elsewhere are facing are issues that we're addressing in the United States. Migration and racism and hunger and poverty and violence, as well as the need for unity. We're all engaged in interreligious dialogue and we all do all of these activities because of our common faith in Christ. I'll tell you, I'm really in a sense the child of the ecumenical movement, uh, not only because of uh, my family background, but because when I graduated from university, I was accepted into a short-term missionary program and I was sent to work in Fiji at the Pacific Conference of Churches headquarters. Uh, that was 40 years ago. So my first real full-time job uh, was within the ecumenical movement. And even then, 40 years ago, in the Pacific, we were talking about um, sea level rising. We were talking about the dangers of deep sea mining. We were talking about the dangers of uh, pollution, radioactive pollution in the uh, ocean and the testing of uh, nuclear weapons at that time across the Pacific. We were sounding the alarm 40 years ago, long before uh, some of these international scientific reports were, were telling us about climate change. The church has known uh, because the church is rooted in the local communities and in these thousands of islands across the Pacific. We have seven African-American member churches in the National Council of Churches USA of our 38 churches. And they help to hold all of us accountable. And they have said, if we're not going to address this fundamental issue in the United States, why do we have a Council of Churches? So this is already, uh, of course, a strong uh, emphasis, but a long and winding and challenging road uh, because there will be no easy end to racism. But the churches have said in the National Council of Churches, we're working to end racism, not to make it less bad not, or less intense, but to bring an end to racism. So being here in um, the Ecumenical Center and uh, hearing from uh, WCC colleagues as well as colleagues from around the, the world, it reinforces for me that we're on the right track. This is a Christian imperative, a faith imperative, uh, and it's an international imperative. So we're really working hard uh, to, to end racism. Yes, in the United States, there's a lot of polarization, as we know, uh, on so many matters, uh, racial and ethnic lines, uh, on um, uh, political divisions, uh, uh, over uh, migration issues, countless uh, uh, fault lines of, uh, of division. But actually, 
many of the local churches that are part of the National Council of Churches, and there are nearly 100,000 local churches, these are places where on Sunday morning, my own local church, for example, in Alexandria, Virginia, when I sit down, I don't know if the person next to me is a Republican or a Democrat. And uh, these churches are perhaps one of the last remaining outposts of regular gathering of people of, across divisions, theological and uh, political divisions. They're there simply to worship God and to live out their faith through feeding the hungry and sheltering the homeless and clothing the naked. Uh, this is essential to who we are. This is magnificent. There are, there are many churches in the United States where in a local church everybody's a Republican or everybody's a Democrat, but many of the churches in the National Council of Churches are really um, a diverse uh, politically and um, theologically and so forth, and we, we treasure that. Uh, I think that uh, that both holds the key and the promise to re-knitting the social fabric in the United States and it simultaneously holds out the possibility of limiting us from really being involved in prophetic efforts for justice and peace. Because now, uh, young people are leaving the, our churches. Why? They're feeling the church isn't relevant. It's not speaking to climate change. It's not speaking to racial justice. It's not speaking to limited opportunities for their economic future. It's not speaking to gender justice, to human sexuality, and so forth. So we may be hanging on almost in a sense too tightly to the, di the, the political diversity in our congregations when we need also to be speaking about these critical issues of justice and peace. So it's a tension there, the desire for unity. And I use the local church as an example, but it really can be, uh, uh, that story can be told at a larger level. But uh, how do you balance uh, the need for unity uh, with the desire for justice and peace? And I would suggest that the years ahead are going to be perilous, not just in the United States, but elsewhere. And we see these fault lines deepening. And so we're working very hard um, in a variety of settings uh, with um, uh, where you have the National Council of Churches and the uh, National Association of Evangelicals and the Conference of Catholic Bishops and other groups uh, that 20 or 30 years ago wouldn't have been sitting together, but now are sitting together working on hunger and poverty and working on climate change. And we have to find other places that we can work together because uh, if we can't work together, I don't know how the, the nation can have uh, a bountiful and abundant future for all of us. Mm -hmm.